Believe it or not, they made boat engines for just a couple of years. And so that's fairly rare. And but most of the stuff, particularly in Ontario, because we have so many lakes, um, and our season's so short, nothing mm -hmm. gets worn out. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and motors are small enough that people keep them in the garage or the boathouse and think, well, you know, yeah. they get a new one, but you know, maybe the nephew will fix that up someday and uh, use it. That uh, there's a lot of them around, which means that as a hobby, you can do, you pick these things up for, you know, almost nothing. And it's just a hobby because there's no market for this stuff when you're done. Yeah. But it's cheaper than cars. <laughs> no, true. It doesn't take special tools. Yeah. And you, and uh, some guys get it really into the collecting aspect of it. Yeah. Some some people, um, you know, like to follow a theme. Others just just like them because they're mechanical yeah. things, and it's a, it's a hobby to do. A lot of people are finding them where in like grandparents' garages, kind of yeah, thing. Yeah, garages, boathouses, everywhere. There's a lot of them around here because we have so many lakes in Ontario, and unlike um, as I always say, unlike a lot of things. Canada and Ontario particularly wasn't a backwater for, uh, it was a major market. Okay. So all the major companies made them here in Ontario. Like there was a, Oprah Marine had a big factory in Peterborough. Uh, they made Johnson, Evan Roos and Elto's. Mm -hmm. uh, Mercury made them here for a while. Uh, McCullough made them in Barrie. Chrysler made outboards here. Uh, sadly, now that's not the case, but that's not the case in the U.S. very uh, for for most manufactured things yeah. now. But uh, it was a major market. Um, that, like I remember back in the day when I was just a young fellow, my dad had I don't know which one one of these probably an Evinrude or a Johnson. One or, of those uh, yeah. pull and go. Yeah, <laughs> you know, yeah. Right? Just kind of hold, pull it and hold on. Yeah. And then like cars yeah. and a lot of other things, like uh, an old washing machine, let's say. No, well, nobody's going to keep an old washing machine. Yeah. But you always keep, you know, uh, they had one and then they got the new boat and they got the new motor and the old one. They thought, well, you know, maybe I'll keep it and so-and-so will use it and then it, it hides there. Like and, that, that Evinrude right over there, that kind of looks familiar. I yeah. just. Just by this little throttle handle, I think that yes, is, isn't it? that's right. And it's probably actually examples of the, the very last one in there. It's probably the most common motor you'll find in Ontario. This is interesting because this was, uh, uh, this is actually four cylinders. Oh, wow. Four tiny little pistons, four cylinders, and it was a uh, for fishing because it trolled so well, it was so smooth. Yeah. And uh, yeah. I'm not sure of the age, this is probably like late 40s, early 50s. And um, it was a great fishing motor, uh, four cylinder. Then you get into the 50s, of course, you get it, it's all color and style. And yeah. I even yeah. got one with tail fins on it and you know, everything. Uh, no, I've seen the red mercury one. Oh, they, you, in the 50s, like this one is uh, blue and white. You could get any combination of colors. And Mercury did that. Mercury did that uh, until like it, it's. There are also timepieces, mm -hmm. and you can sort of see it through here. Um, the colors and motors was just at its heyday in like '55 through '58. Okay. And then came 1959, and it's like as fast as fins, and as it as started, it ended like Johnsons went to all white. Mercury went to white and black, and then they eventually went to black and white. And this color was passe. That was so old, you know. Yeah. And the, and the, the color disappeared, and they went to very plain Long colors. Long time ago. I don't think you um, were born. I, I wasn't born. Oh, I don't and, uh, well, 59, my God, that's well before mine. I wasn't even a thought at that that stage of the game. The, the what? Yes. No. This Check is that out. a backpack. <laughs> no way. Fold it up, and then you, you, you put that together, and then you can fold it up, and you can pack it into. Uh, and again, in Ontario, you think about it. Uh, a lot of lakes weren't accessible, so you had to portage place to place. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, you can put that in a knapsack, and uh, the canoe on top of your shoulders, and away you go. And, and what would something like this weigh? Approximately. What do you think? Oops. 10, 20 pounds. Oh, wow. I don't know. Not that heavy. Not that heavy. No. <laughs>
Yeah. One, twin spark plug, gas tank on the back. Twin, twin cylinders, yeah. yeah. And then you get into the 1930s, and you cut, and again, you know, we've we've gone through this area where, as I like to say, these early ones, they're like contraptions, they're like me mechanical contraptions, you know, it's yeah. steel and it's something. While well, they're commercially made and purpose built, they're 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 sort of like an old farm engine. <laughs> and then you get into to ones like these, and they're they're a real motor, but they all yeah. are exposed. You get into the 30s and the Art Deco. The styling, the casting. Suddenly, we're we're not worried about the mechanical. Suddenly, you know, a cowl and casting. Yeah. And and, and uh, you get some really beautiful castings and and and, and streamlined shapes because yeah. Buck Rogers and all that's sort of what's going. You get the fifties and you get a lot of fins and and wings and everything after the war. With it's, it's got to be thing, yeah. airplane, jet airplane. Yeah. Derived. Yeah. You know, and then. Uh, so how many horsepower is that one? This one? Yeah. This is an example, actually. As hard as you can crank it, I guess. Of, there was a lot of manufacturers who sold things like this. Um, and as you say, it's a, it looks great in a magazine ad or on the shelf. You sit there and thinking, gee, you know, I could I get tired of paddling. If I got this, I could I could fish and troll. And, and you think it's a good idea. But when you put it on the boat, you realize you just got one arm working. And you got all the loss of the gearing and down there, and you're exhausted after five minutes. You've gone, you know, 50 feet. Yeah. And versus a pair of oars, <laughs> <laughs> you, you, you got your back and your arms, yeah. and a, or a paddle, you know. And and they they seem like a good idea, but they really don't work well. Yeah, but no they kidding. sell well, and that's what they're designed to do. They're designed to sell. Come off the lake with one arm, just massive. Oh, I know. <laughs> And then you get some strange ones, like, again, a good idea that, that uh, these are fairly rare and collectible because just they're so neat. Yeah. They put the motor underwater. There's a cutaway here. Oh, wow. And the crankshaft here is actually the propeller shaft. And the piston's underwater here, submerged. And there's a snorkel tube to a carburetor. Beautiful casting. Again, oh, you can wow. tell this is from the 30s. Uh, beautiful casting. Um, little gas tank, little carburetor there. To start it, you tipped it out, wrap the rope around there, set the pitch of the propeller you wanted. Well, you start, set the pitch? Yeah, if you want reverse, you turn it that way. Oh, wow. And uh, um, start it, lower it in, and it probably would stall. <laughs> <laughs> Again, one of these things that it, it sounds like and seems like a great idea, yeah. and it looks good, but it's it's I don't know. I think it's like 1.1 horsepower or something, and um, you know, it just doesn't have enough power to do anything. The breeze would come along, you go backwards. Water will probably get in and short out the spark plug. Mm -hmm. You know, so they they look and seem better than they actually work, but they're an interesting idea. I would have never thought. Yeah. Well, they tried everything, and again, sometimes they're just designed to sell. Well, you mentioned the wings. You can see the kind of the yes, wings on the boat, boat right? This boat, again, I... I oh, Scott. Yeah. I remember that name. Yes. Well, Scott was... It was started out as Scott Atwater. And then in about the late 50s, I think it was 58 or 59, McCullough chainsaw people, the most renowned for, bought them out. And, but they, they call, still called them a Scott Atwater the first year. Then it was Scott McCullough. Uh, Scott, and then it was Scott McCullough. And then they changed it to McCullough. No, I've just been to some uh, cottages, you know, old timers kind yeah. of thing that just don't get rid of anything. And, yeah. you know, there the boat sits under tarp and you, you you know, take the tarp off and, oh my God, look at that. Well, once you get into the 1950s, and it's not fair to, you know, arbitrarily draw a line like that, but once you get into the 1950s, the motors now are still quite reliable. Um, there's, you, you still find people running these uh, mid '50s Johnson and Evinrude's, and you still get the parts from, and they run great. And uh, you still can get the parts. Yeah, and okay. there's they're reliable and they're 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 trustworthy. So, ironically, you know, 
people are always asking what these things are worth and there's really not much of a market for these things and and particularly there's a lot of these ones from the 50s around and mm -hmm. I say well you know to a collector most collectors have more than they want and you know it's $25, $50, it's, it, it's nothing. But to a fisherman, <laughs> yeah. it's probably worth a couple hundred bucks as, as a as a working motor, yeah, you know, yeah. and because they they are perfectly reliable. Well, I I've got a, a 1957 35 horsepower Evinrude that I run in the summer all the time. It's, it still do. Yes, yeah, manual start. I start runs all the time on an old Cedar Strip boat. It goes great. I've been all over in it, and it, it works fine. They're they're perfectly rel reliable. Yeah, yeah. That's probably similar to what you remember now maybe oh, not we, that yeah. color no yeah but this is probably the most popular motor in ontario they they sold a lot of these and again a lot of it has to do with the time now they came out with this right after the war okay so there'd been no production for a while and you know, a lot of people starting families and up, up until then um most people didn't have a boat uh, who, but fishing was still popular and you didn't, you went to the, the marina and you rented a boat. Most mm -hmm. marinas rented a boat. You want to go fish, you rent a boat, but it came with a horse. Well, you could buy this and um, it was self-contained, had the gas tank here, it had a recoil start, it's all cowled, it has a carrying handle. You pick this up, you put it in the back of your Buick there. You go up to the marina, you rent the boat for the day, you plunk this on, and then you're off at the f fishing, you know, by the time you get to the other side of the lake where the, the lunkers are, you've got this thing. Yeah. And it, it's simple, you know, that uh, reverses you. Turn the engine. Spin it around, that's reverse, that's <laughs> I forward. I still remember that, yeah. Yeah. No, yeah. Uh, and they sold, they sold like hotcakes. I mean, yeah. and, and, and again, some of these can get kind of funky, but if they work, they work forever, and people are still running. Mm -hmm. you know, I, I still remember that, turning my dad turning the engine yeah. around, the four of us, my brother and I, and my mom, and my yeah. dad in the boat kind of thing, and oh, someone got stuck, you'd turn the engine around, you'd back up, everyone would be reeling in. Yes. Yeah. Oh, well, right on, outstanding. Yeah, so, and this is an example, you know, I talked about the Art Deco styling in, in this. This is 1946, but it's really, you can see the Buck Rogers, the, the covered cylinder heads, the streamlined. Yeah. Everything was streamlined then. And, but of course, after the war, there was such demand. So this was really a, a motor from the 30s, but after the war, they hadn't been designing any new motors or making any, but yeah. there was a huge demand, so they were turning out a lot of their old production. Okay. And shortly after this, Mercury got into uh, you know, motors that looked like this and faster and into racing motors and, yeah. and, and stuff. This is an, old, uh, an example of the, uh, it's really an example of the 1930s style where it's all about streamlining seemed to be the, 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 the thing. Yeah. No, I'm going to have to go home tonight there at my parents' house and, uh, you know, kick some blankets off there and see what's down there kind of thing. It's, yeah. You know? Everyone, all the new stuff, the new stuff. But yeah. some of the old stuff, it's, yeah, wow. Yeah, and as they say, well, you know, got a uh, young kid there. He's, I think he's 14 or 15. He's joined the club, but he's, he's, I think he did this one. Okay, so the club, the club has a website? Yes. Well, what's the address? Yeah, here, hold on. And it's really just a, a bunch of hobbyists. Bunch of hobbyists. Yes. Right on. So, um... You know, so so somebody you know one wants to get into this kind of thing and you know ask questions kind of thing. Yeah. Usually jump online and That's fire right. away. That's right. Or come out to one of our swap meets. We have swap meets. We have meets where we get together and run boats and motors and you know guys exchange parts and uh, you know a lot of people make replacement parts and like people start making the replacement decals. Yeah. And uh, um, some of the parts that you can't get anymore. Um, they make like the paint. These guys like you get a, he'll put in a spray bomb the exact match paint. Oh wow! Motor yeah. And decals and it, as I say, it's a good hobby people can do. It doesn't take tools. Doesn't take space. You know, like if you want to restore a car. <laughs> yeah. It yeah. Takes a lot of money. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and space, a specialized tool. Easily done downstairs in the basement. And with a spray a bomb and and, yep. and uh, yeah, and if you make a mistake, so what?
Yeah. Okay, well, thank you very much, sir. Appreciate it. You're welcome. It. Yes.